Hey everyone, it's Scrags, or whatever you know me by, Matt Norris, Scraggy King 20 whatever. I've always wanted to do this type of video where I talk into the microphone about stuff I'm interested in, but you see, the stuff I'm interested in is like, farming sims, and uh, yeah. So I never really had the opportunity to really do that, but now that I have a second channel, uh, I decided to like give it a go. And the reason I'm talking right now is because I wanted to talk about something interesting that was happening with farming simulators, or at least for me. So for those of you who don't know, Natsume was the original publisher for the Bokujo Monogatari series, if I pronounce that right. Most likely well known for their localized name Harvest Moon. Now I say original publisher, but what does that mean? Well, stuff happened between Natsume and the company behind Bokujo Monogatari, Marvelous Studios, and now Marvelous is localizing their Bokujo Monogatari games with Xseed Studios under the name Story of Seasons. But Natsume also wanted to do something with farming simulators, so they're releasing their own branch of Harvest Moon games under the same original title that being Harvest Moon. Now, I'm heavily paraphrasing this, but the gist is that Story of Seasons is the old Harvest Moon, and the Harvest Moon games that are being released now are a part of a new branch of farming simulators. So the stuff like Friends of Mineral Town and all that, that's Story of Seasons now. But yeah, however, Natsume hasn't really seemed to understand how to make a farming simulator game, and has failed pretty much every time they tried. Meanwhile, Story of Seasons, on the other hand, is doing pretty well, all things considered. So here's what makes the situation really interesting. Story of Seasons is releasing a new entry in their branch called Pioneers of Olive Town, releasing on March 23rd of this year. However, their quote-unquote rival of sorts, Harvest Moon, is also releasing their newest entry in their line of farming sims called One World, releasing on, oh, March 2nd of this year. Fighting words there, eh, Natsume? So both games are being released very close to each other, and here's the kicker. Natsume might actually have something to show for once. So let's talk about it. First, I want to talk about Harvest Moon One World. It's... well... definitely a game. For Natsumi's standards, I feel like it blows every single one of their past games combined in the visual department, and it's actually a little surprising to see the Bachelors and Bachelorettes change, especially considering Natsume has shown to not be shy from the idea of recycling characters. But the visuals and character designs alone make me really interested to see how well their newest installment will hold up. Then again, I was the guy who looked at Skytree Village with a lack of better judgement, saw this part of the screen, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna spend $50 on this. I think it was the first time I returned a game just because I didn't like it. But still, even if the character designs look nice, there's a lot of parts of Harvest Moon One World that I feel are very, uh, lacking. On the other hand, let's talk about Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town. I'm actually not too sure how to feel about Pioneers of Olive Town, to be real with you. The trailers look really good, honestly, but I don't know, there's something about Pioneers of Olive Town, like at first glance, I'm a little worried about, I guess you could say. But I'm actually a little embarrassed to say that my attention is mostly aimed towards One World. That isn't to say I'm not excited any less for Pioneers of Olive Town, however. Again, the art style and character designs look really nice, and the little bits of gameplay they did show off in the trailers look good as well. I'm very excited to learn more about all of the characters in both One World and Olive Town. I guess I feel a little iffy coming out from playing the Friends of Mineral Town remake, considering how I felt it was a little lacking in content. Don't get me wrong, it's like a it's a pretty good remake, and I understand that the original had pretty much the same things the remake had. If not more, but that was because I went into this game after Trio of Towns. Personally, I feel like Trio of Towns was the best experience I've had with the Bokujo Monogatari games ever. It's absolutely packed with content and there's a lot of quality of life stuffs, like an improved rucksack as well as multiple festivals and cultures to see and try out, as well as people to meet. All of the characters have little events that happen every now and then which gives everyone time to shine and I think that's really cool. Not to mention there's DLC which adds on top of that more characters, more dialogue, more events. Like Trio of Towns is pretty fun. The pacing of this game is actually pretty good as it slowly gives you more and more to do, more people to talk to, as well as give you time to adapt to the new changes in the game or to master the things the game offers. On top of that is a little story mode which gives you a goal to work for but in a way that isn't really forced so you can play the game at your own pace but is done in a really good way to lay out the series of events that lead you, the player, 
later into becoming a farmer. It gives you like more of a goal and a desire to play your role as the farmer and like to succeed. I won't like speak too much out of it if you're interested in Trio of Towns, but like for those who've played it, I hope you know where I'm going with this. Since this will be the game that came before Pioneers of Olive Town, if you don't count the remake of Friends of Mineral Town, which I assume attempted to keep as much of what kept the original what it was, as well as a really clever way to tell new consumers that this was the Harvest Moon they knew and loved in a way to help guide the confusion, you know, between the two branches of titles, because, you know, it still gets a little confusing. Minor script edit, I <laughs> forgot about Doraemon Story of Seasons, but I haven't actually played that one, so I don't know if, like, it really counts, but, um... Meanwhile, on the other side of the coin is Natsume's Harvest Moon Backlog. I only have a very shallow grasp of all the games since I've only played through the first four to five hours of each title, and I have an especially very shallow grasp of the Lost Valley, which, from what I've seen, is just a really watered-down Skytree Village. Obviously, I could be wrong since I didn't play them all the way to the end, so take my opinion with a grain of salt. There's Skytree Village, which I briefly mentioned earlier that has a really bland world and story, really strange mechanics such as plants needing to be watered multiple times a day, and the game is just really buggy. My sister, who also bought the game, pretty much got softlocked into hard mode since the well dried up in her game, and there was no directive or anything to get it repaired at all, so she pretty much had to rely on a harvest sprite to water all her crops. And if you haven't played Skytree Village, basically there's like this system where you can ask harvest sprites to do chores for you, but you like can't like constantly ask them to do it. But because the harvest sprites get tired, they can't water the plants every time, so it made managing plants really frustrating. Also, if you didn't like the Minecraft mechanics of the Lost Valley, uh, I'm sorry to state that uh, it returns in this game too! Yay! Seas of Memories is, in my opinion, actually pretty okay. Until you realize that mining resources and paying to refine them, then selling those resources to the merchant is actually more viable than farming, which is, uh, you know, farming may be the point of a farming sim. So, you know, the best course of income being mining, uh, <laughs> a mining moon. But for a normal game, it's actually pretty decent. But then Stardew Valley released for mobile, so you're better off buying that instead. Next, I'm moving on to Light of Hope, which is pretty much the aesthetic of Seeds of Memories and the depth of Skytree Village, all in one PC and Switch game. This was allowed to be on the Switch and the PC. It's clunky, slow, and really lazy, considering even the characters get recycled. You get one new character, really, and they lock two dateable characters behind a paywall. Yeah, because I'm going to spend money on Herlock Sholmes and bootleg Kurisu from Actually, and I'm not gonna count Mad Dash because it's not even a farming simulator anymore. So to conclude my rant of thoughts, to me, I'm a little unsure about how I feel about Pioneers of Olive Town. That's probably gonna change when the game comes out, obviously, because we don't know anything about either. Well, well, we know like something obviously about either of the games, but like we don't know if Pioneers of Olive Town will have the depth of um, Trio of Towns, which would be really amazing if they build even on top of that. But meanwhile, Natsume with One World has a promising product with a worrying history, and it's not like to say. I support Natsume's shitty business practices, and it's not like I'm saying that Story of Seasons Pioneers of All of Town looks worse than One World, which definitely isn't the case, because at the end of the day, I'm not really expecting that much from One World, it's just the trailers have already passed the very, very low bar for <laughs> their type of, like, game quality that I expect from them, which is why I'm a lot more excited to see what they have in store, but I'm still expecting Pioneers of Olive Town to be the better game, but you know, I'm looking to be surprised. It would actually be really cool if One World ended up being a decent, or maybe in a miraculous uh, sense, a good game. <laughs> but yeah, again, if you like either of these series, that's totally fine. You can like whatever you want. Either way, I'm excited to play both, and if you guys are interested in hearing my first thoughts on the games, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. It was my first time doing a sort of like semi-scripted rant video where I just talk about stuff that's on my mind, so feedback would be really appreciated. Hopefully my takes weren't like super bad or anything. Uh, I might do another one of these rants when I go through my experiences with past Rune Factory series and discuss my thoughts on Rune Factory 5, so stay tuned for that if you're interested in that. If you want to see more Farming Sim stuff from me, I have a blind Rune Factory 1 series on my main channel for my Rune Factory Marathon, where I attempt to beat every mainline Rune Factory title before 5 comes out. But yeah, with all that being said, uh, thanks for watching.